Welcome back to the Oaki Show, and today we're talking about the trading of Linus Olmark to the Ottawa Senators, and oh my good god, this is a horrible trade for the Bruins, because like, Linus Olmark, 2023's Vesna winner, 2023 last year, winning that amazing President's Trophy with the Bruins, being a huge part of that squad that breaks the best record ever, of course he goes on as a not amazing goaltender in the cup run that ended in the first round against the Panthers, but whatever. And then this year, he was their main goaltender for most of the season, but Jeremy Swayman ousted him out of the net for the playoffs as they was so hot at the time. And so they needed to move on because Swayman, he's the future of the net for Boston and they needed to move on from Olmark. So Linus Olmark is getting shipped around. We all knew that this has been going on for a couple years now. And he finally gets dealt the big trade, the Vesna winner, this big time goaltender, this super sweet. And this is the return. A backup goaltender, which the team that's being shipped away from quite literally said that they are not happy with him. A mag player, I'm guessing, for contract reasons that they need to somehow get this guy out. And also, the Bruins' original first round pick. Okay, so the return is a late round, late first round pick, and uh, th this just this just doesn't. How did no other team like trade for this already? Like how? Like are you telling me that like a team like the Devils? I mean, I know the Devils got Markstrom, which is a better pick, but I mean, a team like the the Maple Leafs couldn't have done the same here. I'm sure the Maple. I don't think they have their first round pick, but uh. You know what I'm saying. Like, there, there's got to be another team around the NHL that could have made this work. And this is just insane. So, Eunice Corposalo is the return. Four years left of his deal still with $3 million attached to that, which is not that big of a cutoff from Linus Olmark. I think Olmark is – I know I should know this, but I think his is like – five million dollars i think was his uh contract so it's only like a couple million in savings and it's a 25 percent retained by the the senators for four more years which does kind of suck but this is only a million so not really that much of like a budget cut for the boston bruins here really just a really like solid backup goaltender for swayman i guess it, it, it's a strange move because to me the big thing for uh, for me i mean i know i'm not the end all be all of everything obviously i'm some guy with just some random youtube channel but if i even if i was playing just gm mode or something like at least omar's contract move would have to be a cap dump at least and get something in return and even if that, like, sure, they get their backup goalie, but then the main prize of the first round pick is the Boston Bruins' own pick? Like, I don't get it. This is such a horrible trade for the Boston Bruins. And it's just so strange. And also, yes, this 2024 first round pick is the Bruins' original pick at number 25. They traded it from the Bruins to the Detroit Red Wings. The Red Wings traded it to the Ottawa Senators. And then the Senators traded it back to the Bruins. So it's like the Bruins got back what they rightfully deserve. A backup goaltender that isn't a cap saving at all. And then just some guy. What the hell? So the Bruins, whatever. Any, especially a team that is trying to make some money. I mean, I know like the cap is going way up this year, but that much savings for a team that's still trying to compete is, a, is strange that they didn't try to really save their dimes, but whatever. But for the Ottawa Senators, the team that really wins this trade, Linus Olmark, does this make a big difference? Does this fix the team and make them go into the playoffs and become... I don't know if a true contender, because you can't say a team is a true contender before they've actually tried to contend, but does this make them playoffs worthy? Two, the last two years, they've been, like, right there in the making, well, maybe not right there, but they've been within reach of the playoffs, and, uh, I don't know if this really fixes everything, because he is not the issue alone. I somehow watched a lot of the Ottawa Senators games last year. I don't know how, I just, like, every time... Like, after school and stuff, like, I would go back to my room and, like, to, to watch the games, and somehow I watched so many Senators games. Like, I, I, like, I know, like, 20 is not a ton, but it was, like, at least 20, 
and watching those games, it was definitely very mixed, because there, there was something wrong with the Senators, because they have a lot of great players, a lot, Kachuk, Stutzel, I mean, last year they had Tarasenko and Drew, well, they still have Drew, but they have all that, they also have Jacob Chikrin, who was an amazing defenseman, Thomas Shabbat, like, they've got tons of depth with Norris down the line, and Pinto, and you've got even uh, Batherson, you can just keep going on and on. The de the the depth isn't that bad. The defense isn't the worst in the league. And goaltending wise, yes, Corpusalo and Forsberg is not the best tandem, but they were not the issue. I would definitely not say the issue was the goaltending. Were they a saving grace? Definitely not. But the issue was the overall team. The the Senators just were not a team that won games, is the way I would say. And I know that's just like what what the fuck does that even mean? But listen, this team, the, the issue was kind of like whatever the hell snapped with the Vancouver Canucks, right? Anything can just change, right? Nothing really big shifted from last year's Canucks to this year's Canucks. This year, and the only thing that changed was kind of like coaching and maybe just like a mindset change with that came with that. And that's one thing that could change because they bring in Travis Green, who was associate. Uh, so assistant coaching the New Jersey Devils last year ever since his uh, going from the Vancouver Canucks which is interesting because the Vancouver Canucks under his reign were never anything that special and then the Devils this year were not that special he becomes the interim coach for a team that already was suffering but towards the end of the season his record I believe was like 8 and 12 and 1 with the New Jersey Devils as his little stint as the coach so like 21 games not a winning record so Travis Green, I just doesn't, I don't think Green is going to be a nice transition from DJ Smith. And the Senators are one of my favorite uh, Canadian teams. They've always been one of my favorites as a kid. I always loved like the O logo with like all the stripes. So I, as a kid, I was just one that loved the, like the look of teams. And so like their look, I always like loved them. And Eric Carlson was my favorite player. So I'm always really, really like the Senators. So I'm trying to be optimistic here. And I like a lot of the players on the team. But there's just a there's there's just not a winning attitude. There's just a missing identity with this team, and I don't. It, it's one of those things where it's like there's some sort of missing spice or ingredient that I don't think Linus Olmark is the solution to. Does this make them better? Absolutely. I think Linus Olmark is definitely a goaltender that Corpusalo or Forsberg. Those guys weren't really guys to steal a game, you know, like they're never like those two goalies would never steal a game. They never go out there one night and play an amazing 60 minutes and just keep a team at one goal. They're just not that kind of guy. But Linus Olmark is. So sure, he's going to nab them a couple of wins this season, but is like let's say just him robbing some games. Let's say it's he robbed seven more games added to last year, right? I think that might have put them into the playoffs, maybe, if they had, like, seven more wins. But still, the, it, the, the, that wasn't isn't just the solution, right? That That's not just the main solve to the team, right? With Travis Green, a new coach with a new mindset to the team, it, it just, this team still reminds me of when Travis Green was the coach, right? of the Vancouver Canucks, where it's like they have the talent of Elias Pettersson, they had Miller by, at that point, they had uh, they had, uh, Bo Horvat at that point, like they had Quinn Hughes, they had Markstrom in that, like they had like some good pieces, like they had like those, those like yeah, they had like the the opportunity to, to do something big with those main players, but there's just not like a winning attitude to the team, and that's just my biggest issue with the with the Senators, it's the same feeling where it's like they they just have they have the depth, they have the stars, but even still, like there's trade talks of Jacob Chikrin being on his way out still. Like who knows who's on his Brady Kachuk? There's talks about him on his way out, and he's the captain, so that's not good. Thomas Shabbat maybe. Like, and I know these are just rumors, and it's like, well, you you never know what's actually gonna happen, but. Like, they're just, and oh, Kachuk even said that he doesn't want to return home, which is to Ottawa. So it's like, there's one thing after another where I'm like, I just don't know what to think about this team. This team just feels like it's all out of disarray. They, they haven't changed the core of the team to make them have a new mindset. And I just don't think Travis Green is that solution. A guy like Rick Tockett, sure. A guy like Sheldon Keefe, potentially, even, too. But with, like, Travis Green, like, I've never been the biggest fan of his. 
and I just don't, I still think this is going to be one of those teams where it's like everyone's going to have high expectations for, as they should, because there's a lot of big names. Stutzel is a guy who I could easily see getting 110 points this year, and so can Brady Kachuk, and he get 40 goals like his brother, and have like these big seasons, but still end up missing the playoffs, because there's just not a winning nature to this team, and I really don't know where you solve that. It feels like it's just one of those issues that, like, a Maple Leafs have, where it's like, sh- like th- they can be as good as they want in the regular season, but when the postseason comes around, they're just not built for that, and there's just something wrong with this team, and I don't know what it is, but to me, does this make them better? Absolutely. Does this make the Senators closer to the playoffs? I think Absolutely. But does this make them a contender? Does this make them go far in the playoffs if this if they get in? Do they even get into the playoffs? I'm not sure. I'm not sold on them yet. And to me, it's going to be a real change. It's a team attitude. It's the way the team plays. Last year, a lot of those games that I ended up watching just seemed like they weren't in those games to win them. It, it felt like they were a lot of times lazy. It felt like a lot of times they were they they were just very sloppy with their play and not very keen. And I just don't think Travis Green is that coach that's going to really fine-tune the system and really get them in the gear. And to me, and I know people really pick on guys like, like Tim Stutzla and for the way he plays and for him maybe be like falling down a lot and maybe trying to be a little bit of like a soccer player. But to me, it's like, this is a team that could really use a guy like Tortorella. This is a team that feels like they could really use a guy like him or a tough coach to really kick them in the gear and straighten them in the line. And I I don't think Travis Green is that coach. I don't think he's going to be one of the... I think he's just not it. And to me, that's all I got to say about the Senators in this trade. So that is all I got to say. So thank you for watching this. If you made it this far, please, I'm begging you, please subscribe, please. And too sweet, have an amazing day, and ta-ta for now.